We've been laying our ducks and our chickens free range. <laughs> so in the morning we just open up the netting and just pretty much just leave it open all day. And then our automatic solar powered chicken coop door opens them up in the morning and then closes at night. And this has been working wonderful for us. Bernice! Good morning, Bernice! Good morning, ducks! <laughs> The ducks still have not discovered our creek. I was hoping that they would discover it being a free range for a couple weeks, but they have not discovered it. Noticing as we're using these three waters uh, for our ducks and chickens, our ducks are messy, right? <laughs> but if we move one of the waters up more of in the middle of this pallet, that this water stays a lot cleaner. The chickens still can still hop onto the pallet and then have some water, but the ducks, they don't, I don't think they like to hop on things <laughs> like chickens do. So that water actually stays pretty clean uh, and it stays full because the ducks are messy, they're, they're taking water out and then the ducks have that big water and then they have this one. Let's see if they laid us some eggs this morning. The ducks have showed the chickens where to lay eggs. <laughs> the ducks started laying eggs down here because this is where they sleep. I think the chickens said, oh. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to lay eggs in these Home Depot buckets. <laughs> so we are leaving to California. One thing us homesteaders, even farmers, or people that are wanting uh, this homestead lifestyle is you gotta think about vacation. I mean, we're actually going for work. Uh, we're gonna be speaking at a Baker Creek heirloom expo in santa rosa california so i mean even though we only have chickens and ducks um it's still a big deal because they still need to be fed they still need to have water you know when we started living this life and moved out here you know it's one of those things where i'm sure you've seen that quote <laughs> it goes something like uh live a life that you don't need a vacation from well we are living that life uh but sometimes you do need to go out. <laughs> so our friends, they have a homestead uh, close by that they're letting us take our chickens to. So super thankful for them. Um, they're supposed to bring by their trailer because we need to load up this chicken coop. I I'm, I'm hoping that, that that's not a big deal. Never done that before, so it should be, uh, it should be an experience. <laughs> But Lorraine pretty much planted our entire fall garden. A lot of tomatoes are growing still. It's, it's getting slower though. Bell peppers. Man, our yard long beans. Look at these guys. These guys are still going. Yard long beans. Uh, so we started saving some of these for next year uh, because this is our best crop that we had this year, our yard long beans. I mean, two of these beans is like a meal for us. <laughs> I mean, we're canning them, we're freezing them, we're gonna be eating them all year long. We showed you guys on a previous video that something's been eating our kale. I believe it was a rabbit, like kind of a baby rabbit hanging out. So, I mean, it's crazy. We haven't had a problem with any kind of critters uh, this in, like the full three years we've been here. And this year, it's all of a sudden, boom, like we have critters that are wanting to eat our food. This place has been had been nothing prior to us moving here. Uh, so they, the critters finally caught on uh, to, hey, there's food here, you know? Uh, so we put up the fencing. Um, 
you know, I think that is working, but still there, there's like a random rabbit that might get in there. Huh. We're making waffles from Daniel Walker's book. What book are we? The favorite book? Yeah, well, one of, one of my favorites. Danielle Walker, she's grain free. And we are using our duck eggs to make waffles. One of our YouTube subscribers sent us a waffle iron, cast iron. <laughs> so we're actually putting it to good use, making some waffles. <laughs> Have someone I have someone picking up the plucker today uh, we ran out this plucker we've rented it out about five times this year so if you're in the Asheville area and you need a plucker I rent this out so contact me waffles are ready looks good all right I've been uh, it's been really hectic here uh, as far as making things you gonna help me today Penelope yeah you have your earmuffs on uh -huh. <laughs> I made some, uh, so far I'm making uh, some cutting boards and then I'm still making some hand carved spoons. You know, it takes time to make stuff out of wood. You know, uh, it's not as fast as you want it to be. These are gonna be some plant presses. I need to put a router to these and then sand. Sanding takes time. What are you making, Penelope? Cutting board for mom. For Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> you, need me to, you need me to cut that for you? Yeah. Okay, on the, where, where at? Where the lines are. Cut right here. The video. Well, that's not good. See that? Cracked. Broken half. Well, well, I need a new blade. All right, you want to drill a hole into that? Yeah. All right, when you drill into something, make sure you put a piece underneath it so you don't drill on the other side. You gotta press down hard. Whoa. I did it. <laughs> All right, I need to round off the edges right here. Here, use this sandpaper. Use this one. You wanna do it on this table? Sure. Um, it's a mess in here, Penelope. Okay. All right, Penelope, you've been a good help. Thank you for helping me. You're welcome. I'll be having, uh, we'll have some of our wood products at the Homesteaders of America conference. With Penelope's help, <laughs> we're trying to get it all done here. Bernice! What are you looking for? <laughs> I'm looking for um, chicken eggs. You haven't found them in here? No, I mean, I see them resting in here and you can see like where they've pushed down the grass and made like a little resting place. And I thought they were laying eggs in here, but I don't see any. Where did they go? Look at these carrots right here. Those are ready. And if we don't pull them now, they're gonna go to seed. Sugar rush peach peppers are ready. We need to pull those. Nope. Call them, call them, say hey. <laughs> I mean, those radishes are ready to be picked, but they're, that's, and then the carrots right there, all those carrot tops are gone. All these carrot tops, they're all been eaten. And my beet tops, I had like two beets right there. See all those carrot tops? Those are eaten up too. And then I have a beet that's been like literally nibbled on. So it's definitely a rabbit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a rabbit. 
Oh, we got some stuff growing. The rabbit hasn't discovered this yet. Arugula. I just hope it's still there when we come back. <laughs> I forgot to thin these out. <laughs> it's kind of hard thinking about leaving right now. I mean, because we have food growing and, and I don't know. It's just kind of hard. I think it'd be easier if we didn't actually have food growing. Like maybe if it was in the winter, like towards the end of winter, I think it'd be easier for us to leave. Tommy toe. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, lemon balm, and I'm gonna make a tea out of it. All right, the girls are harvesting some last minute harvesting before we leave out west. <laughs> it's kind of funny, kind of weird to think about that we're leaving, and also that we're leaving to go speak at an event in California. It's wild stuff, <laughs> wild stuff for sure. But we have some uh, butternut squash. We have one pumpkin. So uh, tomorrow's a big day uh, trying to move this chicken coop and move our chickens. But appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you guys next time.